Hello everyone, this is Patrick from Security and Privacy Academy. Today we are talking about zero knowledge proofs, so let's jump into it. A zero knowledge proof is needed if a proofer wants to prove that they know a secret, but they don't want to reveal the secret to anybody, not even the verifier. And in order to make this video a bit more understandable, um, I use the established names Alice and Bob for the proof and the verifier respectively. So we will discuss two concepts today. The first one is called the secret door, the magic door, and the other one is the Fiat Shamir heuristic, which I will explain in a simplified manner, but mathematically still sound. First, let's uh, talk about the secret door. So suppose we have a contraption, a building like this, uh, in which uh, Bob waits outside, and Alice is in, in is inside the building, and there are two doors uh, that that lead into this room on the right. Um, and Alice can now choose at random which door she she wanted she want to walk into, and let's say she chooses the left door, uh, and she enters and closes the door behind her. Now Bob enters the building, um, obviously without knowing which door Alice took, and he can now at random shout either left or right. Let's assume he shouts right. Then Alice has to exit through the right door. In order to do to, in order to do that, she needs to pass the secret door, and to pass it, she needs to know a secret, which is like a password or something, and she doesn't want to reveal it. So luckily for her, she knows the secret and she can exit through the requested door. If Bob would shout left, then well, she, she, she simply has to exit uh, where she came from and doesn't need to prove anything, she doesn't need a secret, she doesn't need to pass the secret door. So either the prover knows the secret or they were just lucky when they entered the correct door. Because if Alice just would assume that Bob would shout left anyway, then she can just go to the left door and without uh, proving or without knowing anything, she would prove to him that she knew the secret because she had a 50% chance of getting the correct door. So in order to make this more secure, you would have to repeat this process n times, or any number of times, uh, in order to reduce the chance, chance of a lucky guess to 0.5 which is the probability of choosing the correct door, it's a 50-50 chance, to the power of n, since probability is multiplied. Let's now talk about the fiat Shamir heuristic, which builds upon this concept. Uh, we again have our prover, Alice, who wants to prove the knowledge of some number s. To this end, she chooses two large primes, p and q, and calculates n uh, as a multiple of these two numbers and a variable v, which is the secret s squared. I will, um, everything is, is, is built upon this mode n. I will not always say mode n throughout the, the explanation of the, of the algorithm because of the heuristic because uh, it makes things a little bit more, more simple. So um, n and v are public and the secret obviously stays private. What do we do with these numbers? So this is how it works. Alice chooses an, a number r, which is obviously smaller than n, at random, and calculates x, which is r squared, and sends it to Bob. Bob now chooses an e, which is either 0 or 1, and sends this e to Alice. Alice calculates the vari variable y using the random number r, the secret, s, and Bob's e she sends this y to Bob. Bob now um, has to verify, um, it's basically the verification step, and uh, to this end he calculates y squared and compares it to x times v to the power of e. Um, if these two match, then Bob accepts the proof. So why does this work? Remember that Alice calculates y using the secret. So y squared equals r times s to the power of e, and then the whole thing is squared again. 
So if we dissolve the parenthesis, we get r squared times s to the power of 2e. Now remember that the public number v was, calcul was calculated as s squared, so s to the power of 2e equals, equals v to the power of e. And now remember that x, which was also sent to Bob, was calculated as r squared. Therefore, we can, we can resolve it to this, and the equation y squared equals x times v to the power of e holds. And that's why Bob knows that Alice knows the secret. Or does he? Because again, we have a 50% chance to guess e, because it's either 0 or 1, uh, before sending x to Bob. So let's see how Mallory tries to fool Bob. First, she guesses E. And now she guesses, um, in this case, she guesses that Bob will send, uh, will send E equals 1 and chooses X accordingly. Uh, we will see later why she chooses X this particular way, but um, for now she just sends X to Bob, who in turn also sends his variable E. And Mallory was lucky, and uh, Bob indeed chooses E equals 1, and again she chooses Y accordingly, and sends Y to Bob. Now Bob performs the same check he did with Alice, he doesn't know that Mallory tries to fool him of course, and, um, but remember that Y uh, equals R. This is what we had in the last step, so R, Y squared is also R squared. Um, Bob now checks the, the equality, but we know that but we know that x is r squared times v to the power of minus one. So because y equals r, we see that the check succeeds as the v variables, v to the power of minus one, v to the power of one, uh, cancel each other out. So Bob accepts the proof even though Mallory never had to use an S, never had to use any secret variable. Note that um, if she would have guessed E to be zero, then it would be even easier to fool the system if Bob chooses zero, because um, anything to the power of E or anything to the power of zero um, becomes one, and no shared, shared secret is used anyway. So if she guesses it correctly, she just um, she doesn't need any V variable anyway. So, just as we had with the secret door, the key to make the field Shamir heuristic work is to repeat it as often as necessary to ensure some kind of privacy. There is always this, this, the chance to always guess correctly, but as long the longer you make this vector, uh, the vector of X's and, and E's, the, the smaller the chance of guessing correctly becomes. And matters for an attacker are complicated. So practically uh, applications of zero-knowledge proofs are found in cryptocurrencies and terminals with ID cards. Um, there are ideas regarding future applications, um, regarding e-voting, and uh, we'll see what it brings, but the concept is very, very interesting and is, um, is something that to keep in mind if we talk about cybersecurity and secure uh, secure secrets, secure secrets, period. Okay, thank you. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. Uh, tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover next. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.